Oliver, I know you're a busy man on this training camp, so thank you for finding a few minutes to sit down and no talk with us. Um, but yeah, first of all, tell us about yourself and what your job role is with the team. Yeah, I work here as a performance coach, mainly for the development riders. So I am like the main coach for the Devil team, but actually we all train Devil and Pro riders. We're fascinated to chat with you specifically because we're really interested in the numbers and the data behind this camp and um, wanted to start off by taking a dive into some of the basics there. So how many days, how many kilometers, how many hours of riding are the riders going to do on this camp? Yeah, okay. So we arrived Saturday and we will leave on Monday. So we have like 10 days of the training camp and I think we'll do approximately um, 1,250 uh, kilometers in a in the week um, which will be like around 40 hours um, total duration on the bike of course because we also have some uh, off bike sessions in the morning um, some strength gym sessions um, yeah yeah so it's a, it's a lot of work um, what about the kind of obviously that averages out about four hours a day but we we went out on a ride with the guys that was six hours long so it fluctuates what's the kind of um, longest distance longest time ride and the shortest time ride that they'll do mm -hmm. the longest uh, ride we're going to do is on sunday it's like a seven hour ride around 230 kilometers yeah and how much, um, it's a hilly region that we're in down in Denia yeah. in Spain, near Alicante. How much climbing will the guys do, do you think, during that entire week? I think they'll average on a daily basis around 2,000 altitude meters. So yeah, like the whole, the whole camp, 20,000 or even more, yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot of climbing. Not quite Everest, but getting close. Yeah, indeed getting pretty close. Mm -hmm. One of the jobs I think for, for you, if I'm not misunderstood, is like a, a really critical part of the job actually is managing the training load. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about how you me measure the training load and what kind of intensity and what kind of load the riders are under on these rides. Yeah, okay. So maybe first, nice to, um, yeah, to speak about as well is that we divide all riders in groups just that they can train in their specific zones as much as possible like on a, on a training camp like this, they will have to ride in groups and you try to make them as small as possible for the quality of the training. Um, but you also want them to ride a bit together and have like the, the team feeling. So that's a bit of a balance we make. Um, and that's also one of the reasons we did on the second day of the camp, a uh, lactate one uh, threshold test. Um, yeah, in which we like um, determined the top of their endurance uh, rides and uh, yeah, based on that we made different groups and we have the riders train in, in, in four to, to six groups um, yeah, j just to measure intensities a bit let's say um, and on that the the lactate test that you mentioned um, how does that lactate test work that that's not one you do in the lab is it because often lactate testing done in the lab but you did this one out on the road i believe yeah yeah indeed so what we did is uh we found like a good gradual climb around four or five percent um six to eight minutes depending on the power output they're pushing um uphill and we let them do a run we take electric measurement on top they go down they'll do it again and they increase the power output um, every run by, for instance, 30 watts. And then, um, yeah, we try to establish in the first runs a baseline. And then when we see the first lactate increase, actually, that's where we light or determine the lactate threshold, the first lactate threshold. And that's what we wanted to get out of the test, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, while we're on the subject of physiological tests, you're also doing some sweat tests, I believe. And what, yeah. what data are you capturing there and how are you using it? Yeah, so that mainly is like uh, the field for the dietitians, but I think most of the yeah, most of the things we get out of it is like the, the sweat concentration um, and also a bit of the sweat rate. But of course, it all depends on the intensity that you're doing uh, during the testing. Um, so we try to do two sweat tests. Um, yeah, just to have some more information about that to adjust uh, the nutrition plan and, and the, the in-race um, hydration on that. We've been lucky enough to stay in this lovely hotel with you guys this week. I've got to say, it's at night, it's 
peaceful, it's dark, yeah. it's quiet, it's cool. Um, for me, I haven't got my kids waking me up in the night, so I'm sleeping like a baby here. Yeah. How, how much sleep do the riders get? Because I know that's a priority for, for recovery on a camp yeah. like this. So actually all of the riders, uh, we, we did a sleeping questionnaire, by the way, in, in the past month uh, of the riders, and actually they, they sleep all quite well. And I think here at the camp, they sleep like around eight and a half to nine hours a night. So they sleep like babies too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any of them taking a nap during the day as well, or is it just... Yeah. Yeah. Some guys, definitely. We had like quite an early flight on the first day. In the first two days, they did like uh, an afternoon nap as well. Yeah, um, yeah we noticed actually we were sat in the uh, bar area chatting last night, and by nine o'clock, it's deserted. Not like a normal... If you went down the road to Benidorm, just down here, I don't think the bar would be deserted at 9 p.m. No, no, indeed. It's it's quite um, yeah, quite chill here. Not a lot of teams and a uh, yeah, really relaxed atmosphere in the hotel. Um, one of the other numbers, I think you mentioned it, but how many of the trainers are here in in your in your group? So how many colleagues do you have directly doing the same kind of job as you? So we are with four coaches, trainers, um, Jeroen. Dingeman, Sander Cordeel, Kober Vermeire, and then me. And Kober is always is also a link with the University of Ghent um, together with Jan Bona. We had a little poke around the garage area this morning mm -hmm. and we actually had a good look. Victor Campenarts talked to us around his TT bike. Yeah. We've seen a lot of riders, it seems, doing a, quite a lot of riding on their TT bikes here. How, how often are they doing that and, and what's the purpose of spending so much time on these bikes? Yeah, so every rider will at least have ridden one, one time in his... Uh, in this training camp on a TT bike and then the specialists are doing like four or even five sessions in the whole camp maybe some even more for instance Alex Egaert um, yesterday we had an endurance ride and his uh, TT bike was on the roof and he did the last two hours of the endurance ride on the TT bike and like the kind of specialists they do that uh, more often uh, today's recovery ride or some of the guys are also doing a recovery ride on the TT bike um, so yeah, like at least one one time in the whole training camp, but but the specialists, of course, a lot more. Yeah, I mean, uh, I suppose that's because um, you've got to get used to the position on that bike being different. And if you, it, it doesn't matter how many hours you're putting on the road bike, if you're not comfortable and and used to putting power out on the mm -hmm. TT bike, that can be really difficult. Yeah, and definitely now with the bike switch from Ritti to Orbea, it's uh yeah. It's totally different. A lot of riders in the past, they could just use the same position as they had in, in, the, in the year before, but now it has all changed. So they have to get used to it, find again the optimal position um, and get used to it. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you get involved with any of the bike fitting for the guys as well? Or is that something that's done by some of your colleagues? Yeah, so actually all of the riders have the possibility to go to an external bike fitter. It doesn't have to be in the team, but in the team, Jeroen Dingemans, uh, the other coach, is as well the bike fitting specialist. So, yeah, he does the bike fits. Mm -hmm. We chatted with a lot of the riders and some of the staff about the heat training sessions. Mm -hmm. So this like the idea of doing heat adaptation after an endurance ride with, with doing a steady state hour on the, on the trainer with all their clothes on. How many of those kind of sessions would you expect the guys to do during this week? Like, I think we have six or seven ride, uh, riders doing the heat sessions, and some of them, like Victor and Jasper the Bus, they will do like four or five, and then we have some others which are actually quite new to uh, to heat training, and they'll just do it two times in the training camp to get used to it and see how they erect, uh, yeah, in the whole week because actually the the training load in a training camp like this is already pretty high, and when you add a heat training, yeah, you have to see how they react, how they recover actually the day after and then, uh, yeah. So Oliver, I believe the team and the riders use training peaks to capture a lot of their data, but yeah. what kind of, you know, what kind of data are you looking at on a daily basis and where's it all coming in from? How do you manage that? Because I would, I would presume that with the power meters, the heart rate monitors, mm -hmm. everything else, you have an absolute avalanche of data to look at every day. Yeah, indeed. So all of the riders, they have like a Garmin watch um, in which we can see some uh, like health and uh, fitness um, numbers. When they wake up, we immediately check their uh, HRV, resting heart rate. Um, yeah, some of the riders as well put on training peaks the metrics and, and they yeah, like give a score on how they slept, how many hours. So we check that every morning. 
and then um, after the ride, we, we of course check the heart rate, power output, and see how how, they, how the guys did the training and if they are fatigued or not. We yeah, we try to get as much as possible out of the data, and indeed it it is yeah, it is a lot on a training camp like this with all of the riders together training on the same moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and do you? I would imagine when you look at that amount of data on a regular basis, you can start to spot trends with riders when they're maybe. Let's say their tr their form's going, or they're trying to they're, they're starting to get sick, or they start they need to back off. What kind of little tells or trends do you look for in order to evaluate whether you should be pushing them as hard? Yeah. So yeah, we always try to find a good balance between the subjective and the objective parameters. So yeah, the the resting heart rate and the HRV is something we yeah we give a lot of value t to in the team, but yeah. It's it's yeah it's technology and you can't always trust for hundred percent on it. It can have an error in the measurement or something. So the objective parameters are yeah at least as important for us as well. I know from chatting with you, Oliver, previously that the intensity factor IF is is a metric that you look at with the riders. Could you just mm -hmm. describe what that is and how you calculate it? Yeah. So actually, the intensity factor is a way. Of weighing like the intensity of a training ride, uh, and for which yeah you need a yeah you need a good estimation of the functional threshold threshold power the FTP, um, and then yeah when you do a training you have the power output and of course the normalized power output in which you see like uh, yeah how variable the intensity was, and at the end of the training like the normalized power is weighed against the FTP which gives an intensity factor, and um, yeah. That's it, actually. Yeah, and uh, as I understand it, it's like a ratio. So it's it's kind of if the intensity factor was 0 0.8, then mm -hmm. you would be riding at it, the normalized power would be around 80% of your FTP yeah. for that session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what kind of range of intensity factor do you tend to see in the rides during this camp, and how would that compare with a hard race? So now, yeah, on the training camp, just like we discussed before, um, the riders are riding in a group and they aren't always like perfectly in, in the middle of their endurance zone, for instance. So we see that the intensity factor is yeah, quite on, on the low side in the endurance rides because they ride together. Um, and yeah, it's, it's somewhere in between 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. So in a race, actually, yeah, it, it depends a lot on, on the parkour as well. Eh? So like in Milan Remo, for example, the beginning is, is, is quite easy. You'll have like a low intensity factor over the whole ride. But like in the more short, um, yeah, intense races, it, it, it's always more than uh, 0 0.8. Yeah, do they, do they ever exceed uh, intensity factor of one? Like in a short time trial, I'd imagine you, you might ride above the functional threshold power for yeah, a while. In, in Prolux, Definitely. Mm -hmm. How high can it go for, say, a short prologue if it's like 15, 20 minute effort? Oh, yeah, 15, 15 minute effort, maybe around 1.1, 1.15, but that really depends like as well on, on the yeah, profile of the rider. So I think the riders work really, really hard on this training camp, but from what we've seen, the staff work really, really hard as well. It's not quite the same. You're not, maybe not burning as many calories, but you're up early, you go to bed late, you've got a lot of meetings and responsibilities. How many coffees a day does it take to keep the, uh, the coaching team fueled, do you think? Actually, that's a discussion we had yesterday uh, at the table, and like the guys that drink coffee, they drink four to six a day, and yeah, also, like quite a lot of guys, which I don't understand, they don't drink any coffee at all. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah, like you, I can't understand that. I don't know how you could get through the days here without the f the full coffee. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. Really, really fascinating. And I know you've got to get back to crunching some numbers, so we'll let you get on. Awesome. Thank you as well.